and July was an exciting month for the nascent space tourism industry. On July 11th, Richard Branson, the founder of the Virgin Group, flew in his Virgin Galactic VSS Unity vehicle to reach the edge of space. A few days later, Amazon's Jeff Bezos also reached the edge of space on his rocket ship, New Shepard. The edge of space is between 50 to 100 kilometers above Earth's surface, thrilling as this may be. There is one pressing concern. Will the budding industry worsen climate change? I'm Nidhi Kumar and you're watching Science Time, a show that brings to you the best that science offers from exciting developments in science and technology to futuristic solutions. And let's move on to story number one. Richard Branson flew 80 kilometers from the Earth's surface. He described his trip as an experience of a lifetime. Jeff Bezos went further above reaching an altitude of 106 kilometers. SpaceX's Elon Musk has more on offer. His company will take passengers on an orbital trip, which could last four to five days later in 2021. Bezos said that space tourism is the first step forward in moving people and heavy industry into space to avert an energy crisis on Earth. Branson is also of the view that space tourism could help address climate change. Other experts disagree. They have raised concerns over the environmental impacts of space tourism. The concerns stems from the fact that rockets use propellants such as kerosene or liquid hydrogen to generate the required push or thrust. These fuels release chemicals such as carbon dioxide, water, chlorine and others. The exhaust can negatively impact the atmosphere, scientists fear. The exhausts are pumped directly into the upper atmosphere, meaning they can stay there for two or three years, according to a report. For now, the space industry uses less than a tenth of a percent of the propellant of what the aviation industry does, a study reported. But that could change when the space tourism industry grows. According to a report, Swiss investment bank UBS estimates the space tourism market could be around $3 billion per annum by 2030. Critics doubt that space tourism could address climate change. They explained that the money that went into building technology for space tourism could have helped address the crisis on Earth, such as heat waves, wildfires and flooding. And with this, let's move on to our next story. And meteorologists had successfully predicted extremely heavy rains and potential flooding. Four days before deadly floods swept through Western Germany and parts of Belgium last week. But they did not expect this scale of devastation. European scientists wonder how the world's wealthiest and the most technologically advanced countries could suffer so much damage. They are examining whether climate change helped fuel the disaster and what that might mean for the future. Beginning 13 July, intense storms dropped as much as 15 centimeters of rain in 24 hours, swelling streams that then washed away houses and cars and triggered massive landslides, killing at least 196 people as of 20th of July. This number is expected to rise. And upon her visit to the flood sites, the Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, remarked that the German language can barely describe the devastation. That same day, more flash floods struck southern Germany. Researchers are just beginning to figure out bits of the complex web of climatic, hydrological and social factors contributing to the catastrophe. But clearly, there are the usual suspects in the equation. First is the warming climate. Warm air can hold more moisture, which in turn fuels massive rainstorms. The second is the outdated European disaster plans that focused on major rivers rather than the lower volume tributaries, which were hit hardest by the storms. New research suggests that the frequency of floods could increase rapidly if climate change slows the jet stream. The high altitude winds circling the northern hemisphere, causing powerful rainstorms to linger longer over flood-prone landscapes. Storms that stall over Europe were once exceedingly rare. But such storms could become as much as 14 times more common in 2100 than they were in 2000. This devastating flood in Europe is a wake-up call to the world. We need to act now, friends. 
Further, governments should take steps to educate their citizens about how they should respond to disaster warnings issued by respective authorities. We also need robust measures to evacuate people from areas that are under threat. And now let's move on to story number three. And China has reported the first ever confirmed case of human infection with monkey B virus. The infected person was a veterinary surgeon. The 53-year-old vet used to work for an institution researching non-human primates. He showed symptoms of nausea and vomiting a month after he dissected two dead monkeys in early March. He sought treatment in several hospitals and eventually died on May 27th. Researchers had collected the cerebrospinal fluid of the veterinarian in April and identified him as positive for the infection. Samples of his close contacts returned negative and thus his family members are reportedly safe from the virus. It is suggested that the infection in monkeys might pose a potential threat to occupational workers. The US Center for Disease Control and Prevention states that the monkey B virus, BV, is caused by macaque, a genus of old world monkeys that serve as a natural host. While macaque transmits the virus, chimpanzees and capuchin monkeys can also become infected and die. Like coronavirus, the first symptoms of the monkey bee virus are flu-like, including fever and chills, muscle ache, fatigue and headache. In time, the person infected with the virus may develop small blisters in the wound, while other symptoms include shortness of breath, nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain and hiccups. Thus, it becomes distinctly clear that the person infected is not suffering from COVID-19 disease. Also, while these may be lethal, these diseases are infrequent and should not be a cause for any panic. And with that, friends, this is a wrap on this edition of Science Times. Stay with us every Friday at 9 p.m. only on India Science. Keep watching India Science. Namaskar.